Hello, Mike Smith here. Today I'm going to show you how to use Audacity and a plugin called Spitfish to remove sibilant sounds or enhanced S's in an audio recording. Firstly, let's listen to a short section of this recorded audio track. In recent years, Okay, so what we want to do is remove the S's from that section. Firstly, let's do it manually. Now, um, the S's can be seen in the waveform in these two areas here. There's two in this little section. Let's zoom in and we'll be able to see them. You can see this tightly packed um, waveform here which is distinct from the normal voice waveform, which is here, and then here another tightly packed um, uh, group of waveforms. That's the sibilant S's. Let's just listen again. In recent years... Okay, now if we want to do this manually, what we can do is just select that bit of audio there and simply use um, the inbuilt effects such as Amplify, to reduce the, um, the, uh, the amplitude of, of, that bit of, of that bit of audio there. Let's go down about 30, 30 dB. Preview that. Okay, and press OK. And as you can see, that's kind of removed that bit there. Now let's play that whole bit. Just uh, select that, play it again. In recent years, so that's made a reasonable um, fist of getting rid of that S manually. Obviously, if you've got a long audio file, that's going to take a long time to do. And also, perhaps just playing with the amplitude might not be the best. We might need to be looking at other things like perhaps using a low-pass filter. But in any case, that would only be useful for very short um, audio tracks with only a few instances of the sibilant sounds. Okay, so that was the manual uh, method. And just zooming back out again to, uh, to the entire track. Obviously, that's going to take a long time to do if we've got a, a long audio track. So um, we're going to have a look at a plugin called Spitfish that does this automatically. And a little later on in this tutorial, I'll show you how to install Spitfish um, as a plugin to Audacity. But just for now, I'm going to undo what I'd done previously. This is the original waveform again. And um, I'll just select that again, play it again. In recent years. Right. Now, what I'm going to do is apply Spitfish to this. Um, this is the control that comes up with Spitfish. Now there's a there's a number of settings here but the uh, most common ones are more or less like this. This would be off here, maximum there, and leaving the depth around about around about there. So let's just turn it off down here down to zero and, and press preview and it should sound as before. In recent years. Okay, now if we turn this up to maximum, listen again. In recent years. Okay, you can hear the difference there. And the idea is simply to play with this control until you've got it about right. Obviously, um, it does have an effect on the rest of the waveform. So it's a matter of finding a compromise balancing point here. So I'm just going to put it there. In recent years. Okay, that sounds pretty acceptable to me, so I'll just press OK, and then um, as I press OK, just watch the waveform change up here. Right, and let's play it again. In recent years. Okay, um, so that's fine, and it didn't take very long as well. Obviously, we can apply that to the whole audio track. Just to show you how long that would take to apply to a typically... 30-minute um, audio track such as we have here. Let's let's have a look at that. So firstly, I'll just undo the change that we made. I'll now zoom out to the entire track. As you can see, it's about 30 minutes long. 
and then I'll um, select all like that apply digital spit fish using the settings that I had there before I'll just okay it's going to take about 30 seconds by the looks of it to do that okay and in a moment I'll show you how um, Spitfish is installed onto Audacity it simply uses a um, um, what's called a DLL file and you you copy that into the plugins folder and I'll show you how to do that in a moment okay eight seconds to go obviously this is a lot quicker than doing it manually however what you do lose is uh, control over the rest of the waveform. So let's go to a portion of the waveform here. Welcome to this DVD on awe and wonder. In recent years, or in okay, so the bird sounds seem to not have been damaged too much. Um, I possibly think that perhaps the the settings were a bit too aggressive. Um, so if so, you can you can certainly undo that. But that's how it works: digital spitfish and manual methods for removing the sib sibilant s's in audio recordings. One thing that I I did forget to mention is. Um, you can see this stereo setting here. Obviously, if you've got a stereo audio track, you need to have that stereo um, uh, stereo uh, radio button enabled there. Okay. Um, next, we'll have a look at how Spitfish is actually installed. Okay. So, how do we install this Spitfish plugin into Audacity? Well. It's pretty straightforward, actually. Firstly, what you need to do is go to the website um, where this plugin has been produced, and that's called digitalfishphones.com. Um, and then get to this page, scroll down to the bottom here, and these are the download files. Now, uh, there's a Windows version here, which I'm using. Um, there's, an, uh, there's a version for older Macs. However, there's an issue that they won't run on the Intel-based Macs. In other words, uh, modern Macs won't run this, this plugin, and that's unfortunate. I've actually got a late model Mac, and the only way I can get this to work is to run Windows on my Mac, and I use Parallels virtualization to do that. In any case, for Windows users, uh, you simply just download that. Um, that will uh, bring up this uh, zip file here the fish fillets v1.zip and uh, what you do is you download that into well what I've done is into the VST plugins folder for uh, Audacity so I'm running Audacity Portable here but if you are running a normal version of Audacity the folder structure under here will be very similar so underneath Audacity, you should have an app folder and a data folder and an other folder. Let's just show you that. So you can see that's the um, Audacity EXE file. And it, you've got other app and data. What you want to do is go down into the app folder. And you'll find a folder called VST Plugins. Right, uh, that's where you uh, copy and save the zip file from the Digital Fish Phones website. Put that in there, then uh, extract that. So just extract that into this area here. Uh, I've already done that, and that creates a subfolder. And it's okay to leave this subfolder as it is. Because what happens is that Audacity will scan that, uh, that folder when it next starts, as long as you tell it to. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Okay, so what we've done is we've gone to the website there, downloaded the zip file, put it into the VST um, 
plugins folder underneath the app folder underneath audacity and then extracted that so that's all there now to tell um, to tell audacity to look for those files what you need to do next uh, preferences here is underneath effects what you need to do is tell it to rescan the VST effects next time audacity is started so do that okay and then I'm going to close down audacity I'm not going to save that all right then I'll restart audacity again here as you can see I'm using the portable and then what happens is that this this window comes up asking you if you want to um, install all of these and so they're all selected there so I just press OK it installs it and then those are all available for, for you to use so you might need to in, import that audio file again oops there we go Um, always a good idea to make a copy of a file before you import and so obviously you only need to install this um, this plugin once and it's available for use on all audio files as you can see there they are there so it doesn't really matter that there's a subfolder here um, audacity is clever enough to uh, to to sort that out so you might have lots of plugins there and just organize them in folders okay and that's all there is to installing a plugin into um, audacity okay thanks very much